All right. Hey. <clears throat> okay, so there's been some controversy over the whole uh, teachers and students and uh, teachers going on strike and the governments and who should have this and what should be done and how much money should be given and if teachers should deserve this money. And so I decided I wanted to make this short little video for you. Hopefully it'll be short. <laughs> Okay, so everyone wants to know what teachers' jobs are. We all, you know, that's always an obvious question, uh, obvious answer that teachers are here to teach. But there's one thing that people forget that teachers are there for to do as well. Teachers are there to do what's called risk assessment. They're also there to do what's called risk implementation. So what that means is that when your child comes to school and they um, are being taught, your teacher is the first line of defense to look for stuff like, um, you know, stuff that's happening in the home, abuse, neglect, um, sexual abuse, all those things are things that the teacher must do uh, as part of the first line of defense. They can't count a counselor for your child's bad behavior until your child exhibits bad behavior. That's what risk, implement, that's what risk assessment is and that's what risk in, implement, implementation is. So unless your teacher is doing that job, uh, your child could continue to be molested or uh, beaten at home or beaten by your friend's father or whatever happened, whatever the situation is. We know that child abuse happens in Canada, it happens a lot, and one of the teacher's jobs is to do that risk assessment. We all forget that. People aren't taught that, that teachers actually have to do that. Um, so let's pretend they have a 22 class size of, of kindergarten children or even up a little bit higher, a few extra children, you know, the, the class sizes are, are fairly large. So let's say that we have uh, 22 children and <clears throat> the average um, course line is two hours. That works out to be about five minutes per child per course, if you break it down, right? 22 minutes into an hour is three minutes, or it's less than three minutes into two hours is less than six minutes. It's five minutes per child. So now we have five minutes to do teach your child. We have five minutes to do risk assessment for your child to make sure the child is safe coming to school and safe at home. So five minutes per course per child. Now, then we have special needs on top of those children. So some of those children require more than five minutes. So now we've taken away a minute or two from each of your other children who are not special needs. Now special needs, we all think of special needs as, as regular things like Down syndrome, all those sort of things like, you know, the regular special needs descriptions. But if we've done a risk assessment and say, you know, your child is being, uh, you know, abused in a home or a home near you, uh, they're going to exhibit behavioral, <laughs> behavioral problems that cause, a, that, that would be considered a special needs case. So in other words, it's not that we uh, see special needs as only people with a disability. We see special needs as people who are and, and not only entitled, but required and, and as a necessity to have extra attention to help heal through the problems that they're facing at home or their friend's home or vice versa. So now, uh, let's talk about quickly, uh, let, me just, let me just take a look at this. What else do I want to add in there? Okay, so teachers. So, so one of the jobs is we just discussed, they have to teach. They do risk implementation, they do risk assessment, but think of all the things that they also have to put up with. They also have to put up a certain amount of abuse. Now we all know that teachers get called names and blah blah blah. Now I'm not talking about that sort of abuse. I'm talking about the kids that actually are kicking and punching teachers. <laughs> There's a lot of teachers out there who have been physically assaulted by children, uh, um, mainly because of behavioral problems. Now, so now we have the teachers who are not only doing all those things, but now they're being uh, assaulted at school. So, then, uh, do, 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 do. we get back to the, so on top of that, now we have teachers that are living throughout the year, some of them being assaulted, some of them having to do the risk assessment and risk in implementation, and when they do that, they have to take on a little bit of that and take that little bit of that home with them. So now they just found out that Johnny has been, you know, assaulted at home or through it, you know, so now they have to be a witness to Johnny's ac accusations. Um, they have to go through it and, and maybe maybe Johnny trusts his teacher more than the counselor in the school. Well, now that teacher is required to a degree uh, by society and by the, by the school to sort of help with Johnny's condition of being 
hurt or, or, or abused at home or at some other place uh, uh, where he frequents, um, you know, activity. Friend's home, a uh, family member's home, whatever that is. So, uh, so then we get to the part where people talk about the raises. You know, uh, teachers want to raise and da 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 da. Okay, so I don't know how many jobs you personally, who's watching this video, have worked for. I've worked for quite a few different employers, and um, I'm entitled every single year to a raise. Now, yeah, some some people get as little raises as like five cents. Some people get two dollar raises. But the fact is that we're all entitled to a raise. Some people automatically get raises, some people have to ask for the raises. But every job in Canada, you are legally allowed to ask for a raise. And if you don't get it, you're legally allowed to walk away from your job. Um, most employers will give you a raise, whether it be a crappy small wage uh, as, a ra uh, as a raise or it be a, a big raise. Either way, you're going to get a raise or you're going to walk. So now we get back to the point of teachers and their... And, and their uh, amounts of money that they make. So, the average teacher, first year teacher in, in uh, British Columbia makes $47,000. I mean, 40, yeah, $47,000 a year. Okay, so if you divide that, no, actually no, it's not divided yet. <laughs> Let's take away 20% income tax. We're supposed to be about $10,000. So now they're getting about $37,000 a year. Divide that to 12, we're supposed to be about $3,500 a month. So $3,500 a month is what a teacher averagely makes, give or take. I'm not saying I have all the statistics, but it's approximately that amount of money. So you take $3,500 a month, and now we're going to break it down to job descriptions. So now I have to teach. Pretend I'm the teacher. I'm pretending now. I'm not a teacher, but I'm going to pretend. So I'm a teacher, and I walk away with $3,500 a month. Now, I've taught your child, which is my job description. That's the box that I have to do. I'm a teacher. The second job done is risk assessment and risk in implementation. So what am I now? Now I'm a social worker. Um, I may have to help. The example is little Johnny, blah, blah, blah. So now I'm a counselor. So I've done three jobs already for my $3,500 a month. Teach, risk in implementation, risk assessment, and counseling. There's another part that we forget that teachers also have to do. If there's not a janitor around at the moment, and your child is sick with the flu or whatever else, you know, your child's probably going to have an excrement from his body or her body. So, a teacher is also, if you were to ask around, I'm sure some people should have hardcore stories about how they had to clean up after your child. So now, they're, being, they're playing the role of nurses or helping with nursing duties until the resident nurse can come and help them. So that's four job duties. The fifth job duty is either being a parent to some of your children. Some of your children... Uh, or sorry, some, some of the children coming to schools nowadays are neglected at home. That is a form of, of abuse, but the fact is that they are being neglected at home, which means their parents don't really care about their children. And there's lots of cases like that. We all heard about them. We all know about them. We all know what exists. So now, your teacher is not only playing a bit of a parent role, but a guidance role to help your child to actually grow in a world where he or she feels neglected. How do you expect that child to actually grow and become a regular part of society or even a, 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 an appropriate or um, a, a, a positive part of society uh, if they have no parent figure that's, that actually believes in them and cares about them. That's five job duties for $3,500 a month approximately. To me, I think a teacher is pretty much giving their heart and soul for very little money. It, 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 I personally, I wouldn't do all those job duties for $3,500 a month. And then in BC, you have to still do all those job duties for $3,500 a month. And guess what? You don't get a pay raise. Isn't that a shocker? Look it up on Google. You actually only get a pay raise after 10 years of service, and it bumps up to double. But you know what's funny about double is also your income tax almost doubles. So you still walk away with only maybe an extra thousand or two. That's about, that's about it per month for doing all of this work. So I just want to put it out there because I think to myself, like there's got to be a way that governments can still help teachers get a little bit more money and teachers can still maybe, you know, try to do their best without this whole thing going on. I just hope and wish that we can all come to some kind of agreement now that society 
who may have not been aware of the different job duties that teachers do, now do know that. And if you don't want to trust me on these job duties I've just told you, um, then ask around, ask teachers, ask them, have you ever had to do risk assessment? Most of them can say, yeah, we do, all the time. Uh, have you ever had to clean up stuff from your child, like, you know, like, you know, had a 